In this video, I'm going to explain the Salinius graph, which is essentially a graph to explain the normal tibiofemoral angle in the coronal plane in accordance to the patient's age. Now, this is really common in the pediatric viva, where they may show you a clinical photograph of a lower limb angular deformity, and they may ask you, what is this and what would you do? The first thing to establish is whether the angular deformity is pathological or physiological. And the five things that you should mention to the examiner that you'll be looking for are the five S's. Now, the five S's can be described as symptoms, and that's usually that of pain, symmetry, so whether the deformity is asymmetrical or symmetrical, stiffness, is it associated with any systemic disorders, or any syndromes. So if you had a child with a painful, asymmetrical, uh, stiff uh, angular deformity with associated systemic disorders and syndromes, then this is more likely to represent a pathological uh, genuvarum or genuvalgum, which would require treatment. However, if you had a pain-free, symmetrical, uh, genuverum or valgum with a uh, complete full range of movement without associated systemic symptoms uh, or syndromes, then this is most likely to be physiological, which is a benign um, condition and probably represents a variation of the normal growth pattern. And this is where you draw the Selenius curve to explain what is a normal growth pattern. So Selenius um, described in 1975. It was in the JBJS. He looked at approximately 1,500 children from birth um, and recorded what was the normal uh, exhibited tibiofemoral angle in the coronal plane. So on the y-axis you have your angle and on the x-axis you have your age. And your age is in years and your y-axis, your angle would have your varus angle up here and your valgus angle down here. And the increments you should use are in fives. So I would go all the way up to 20 degrees of varus um, up there. And here you can go to 15 degrees of valgus down here. So the age four, five, six, seven, and I would at least go to seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he explained that at birth, the uh, typical varus angle would be at 15 degrees. However, when they reached approximately 18 months, they would eventually go to neutral. So varus at 15 degrees, at 18 months, they'd go to neutral. They then reach a maximal valgus angle of approximately 10 degrees at about three to four years of age, so here. And then they would reach physiological valgus at five to seven degrees all the way up to seven years of age, so about there. And then they would plateau to adulthood where they'd still exhibit five to seven degrees of physiological valgus. So here you can just join the dots. So down here, to maximal valgus angle of 10 degrees, and then gradually up there to physiological valgus at age seven. Now it's also ex important to explain to the examiner that there will be a variation of what is considered normal, uh, uh, which represents as a standard deviation above what is normal and a standard deviation below. So this is where you draw two parallel lines around your Selenius curve, which is what you've already drawn, and explain to the examiner that within these two standard deviations, this still represents normal. So here are your two standard deviations. So overall, this is very useful to explain to the examiner to show that you understand what is 
normal and when you would treat uh, a patient with an angular deformity of the lower limbs.